Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Today, guys, of course, we are continuing Young Justice Phantoms, Young Justice Season 4. This is Young Justice Season 4, Episode 11, titled Teg Udar, something like that, but obviously we know the titles is backwards. This is Get Ready. That's the title. Now, I want to address this real fast. Episode 10, I said the title was Rise Demon. I was actually wrong, because on top of having the title, of course, backwards goes to the Zatanna arc, I also flipped the words as well, so the title was actually Demon Rise, not Rise Demon, but when you look at this title and I do the whole flip scenario like I did last week, Ready Get doesn't make any sense, but Rise Demon, Demon Rise, I see the confusion that I got myself into there, so I understand why I got that confused, but this this really sets it like straight, Get Ready, that's how they're doing it, so the, the words are flipped, but the way it's actually said is correct, so, so Rise Demon flipping the words after they're already backwards, that just, it made sense that one did, but Ready Get, Get Ready, does not. So I'm, I'm intrigued, because Etrigan the Demon was introduced in the last episode to go against the child, who embodies all of basically chaos that went against Clarion. Clarion was losing, of course he fled, Zatanna noticed all this and realized this is not good, and Etrigan couldn't do anything, and I was surprised they introduced Etrigan, because I didn't think they would ever introduce Etrigan, because I felt there were some characters in the world of Young Justice that I felt could be introduced, but I just don't know where they would, that it would make sense, but now with the Satan arc, it makes sense for Etrigan, now the question is, the way they ended it, that they need more help, who are they gonna get, who are they gonna get, people are assuming John Constantine, I don't think he's ever been shown on the show, I don't think so. There's been, there's been certain characters they've never actually shown. We know they probably exist somewhere in the, in the world of Earth-16, Young Justice, but we've never seen them because of story reasons, because you don't want to shoehorn characters in. And that's what I've liked so much about the show. And I'm liking this arc so far. I'm liking the flashbacks with Young, well, Young is a relative term to Vandal Savage, but get my point in terms of the history of Atlantis and everything. i just really enjoying what they're doing here in, ter in terms of setting up Clarion is evil, and working for Vandal Savage, but he's lesser of an evil compared to the child and the whole embodiment and controlling all the chaos. In the, and the child's like, well, I guess I'll just use my powers against you because it's not fair if I used all entirety of all of the powers of chaos that was given to me to take you out, Clarion. I don't believe that for a second. But anyways, I'm really enjoying the show. It's fucking awesome. I'm really enjoying this arc, and I just love the fact that Young Justice is going this approach for the season in terms of arcs and, and focusing on certain different types of characters instead of trying to focus a lot on storylines at once, even though last week you got a little bit of a Beast Boy and a little bit of uh, Miss Martian in the episode. So, that, so maybe that's kind of tying in stuff that's going to happen later. That's my guess. But still, they're using a little bit of time to focus on that as well. So we're seeing a little bit more instead of just the Satana arc, but still, it's awesome nonetheless. So let's get into now, guys. Episode 11, get ready. Let's go. The Lords of Order rarely descended. Oh. The theory was empowered by and for the Lords of Order on mm. Earth. Is <laughs> that loud? Soon to be known as Marduk. Keep changing his name. You know who I'm going to see. So you and Blood should go on a oh. tour too. Who are you going to go see? I love seeing magic. I've said that before, but oh, okay. Now it's obvious. Yep, I figured. Nice hey! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, he's still sleeping, of course. So, are you coming or what? Nah, you got this covered. Is that our catchphrase now? Possibly. Jesus Christ, Beast Boy. Oh, here we go. Guess who? The helmet. Oh my god! What? Two chaos lords at each other's throats sounded like a win. Mm -hmm. Right up until their conflict sank half of Roanoke Island. Yeah. Can't wait for the final outcome. We're training really hard. We're ready for anything. Kind of. But kind of. At least they're honest. Now I guess I'm supposed to prove myself. Yes. That's the whole point. Ah, and I'm your puppet idol. Terrific. What in the fuck is going on? Why 
It's the negative and positive. You have the truth? Okay. Oh. Wow, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> oh shit. No, no solution. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Two different things, really, but yeah. Wow. You're using religion to bully me into doing what you want. I am not giving up medicine. He's trying to do both. He's trying to. Mm. The, the water's rising really fast. That's crazy. They're drowning in his own doubts. Say it. Say it. No, no. Nice. But that but Oh! No. She's gonna use magic to do it. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. That was cool. Ooh! Damn. Yeah, they're not doing good right now. What better candidate for order's purpose? So the lords of order oh, okay, this makes sense. The helmet makes sense. Yeah. The limitations of his fragile mortal form, the lords forged something new. Nice. Not That's cool. An agent of order on Earth, but a lord of order was a human host body yep. channeling Nabu's mystic And then becomes Dr. Fate. Damn, get smacked around with puppets. Jesus. Whoa. Goodbye. That's cool. Okay. I'm a man of faith, science, and mysticism. I am better and stronger than anyone Angry. anything. Angry. Anything. Why you want this? Oh. Sergeant full time. Not living your life mm. You are nothing without me. Billy was no, she's way more than just you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I have to stop being a hero. There's a reason why I chose each one of them. They can handle what's coming. Yeah. I mean, they passed the test. The sleeping pills. Let the chaos lords fight. I know, but it's gonna be not good. Fate will step forward to bring order. For if the host fails, so falls fate. To succeed, Lavo must draw on his host's diverse traits, and the victories you so proudly cite. Would they have come without allies such as the League? I mean, that's true. Wow. In the unity of the disparate, that order may truly rise up. Step back from the precipice of your own arrogance. Yeah. Heed the words of those who seek only to aid your cause. He cranked your fart. Oh, boy. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh oh! Ooh! No! Oh, that's fucked up. Did she? Ac she actually beat him. I did not expect that to happen. Yeah, they're all fucking. Even he's shocked. He's like, what? The fucking bus! Oh my god, the bus! Breathe in. Yeah, that, that was so. I was like, what? <laughs> Breathing. Another great episode of Young Justice. Before we get into anything else, what in the hell was that credit sequence? <laughs> just the kid screaming, ah, going through space and shit. The bus we saw in the last episode that almost hit Baby, the new uh, ship that uh, McGann and all them were riding on. They were like screaming and then, ah, 
not like so, <laughs> they did like four fucking times. <laughs> I don't know. That was so fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> that was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So, we have a couple things to talk about. So, Zatanna's three students all went through a different sort of test. And they had to prove themselves and basically overcome their fears and their um, things that bring them down and things that basically would make them second guess themselves essentially of what they're trying to accomplish and what they're trying to do. And so that was interesting to watch because I felt like we don't really know a lot about these characters, obviously before the Satana arc. I think one of them we had seen before, or maybe we had seen them all at a certain point, but there's been so many characters in the show. So, but it was interesting to see it because we had one go through like this puppet type thing where it was like blue beetle, which apparently she's dating, um, Blue Beetle, I forget, um, what's his name? Under, uh, uh, once I see the name for Blue Beetle in terms of the, the actual, uh, uh, character, I'm like, oh yeah, um, that's the character name, but it's not clicking right now. Um, and then a Beast Boy, and then a Satana, and then it flipped where they were, like, towering over her, and I think it was her own self, t like, telling her the doubts and everything, and then you had, um, what, uh, the, I forget his name, but his whole thing was his family, his mom and father coming through like these waterfalls and basically saying, you know, you're, you're, you're not doing this. He's also seeing a mirror of himself under him, basically like a reflection. It was kind of crazy where basically questioning, you know, you want to be a doctor you like, or you want to be a nurse or something like you want to help people, but you're taking away time from doing that to be a hero. And basically why are you trying to do both? And his whole thing is I can do both to help people in different ways, which is interesting because I don't think we've seen really that before in a hero trying to actually help people with the abilities of course of magic and everything but also the abilities to actually help in terms of medical side of things so it's interesting to kind of hear his perspective and the water rising up as they're talking and basically drowning in his doubts basically that was interesting to watch then we had finally i think her name's mary who of course can say shazam and she becomes you know a shazam or whatever and uses that ability, and she has cut it off, okay, they had already talked about that before, that she cut that off, she's not going to say the name, nor she won't say that word, and she used di her different abilities, like, you know, strength of Hercules, and all these different stuff, of helping that little girl, kept saying, say the word, save me by saying the word, and then we see Shazam, and then we see where she's fighting the Shazam version of herself, and beating the shit out of her, but she was still not letting go, and then we see Billy, course shazam and he's like we gave this up a long time ago and she's like no not you like she's like oh shit no and i like the fact that all three of them when they were getting into their test responded the way they did because they all in different ways basically came to the same conclusion but also was fighting back and we saw where the tests were crumbling down as they're openly admitting that they've overcome this and they're trying to overcome this and they're and they're they're ready for this and the whole reason behind this is that Satana took them to Dr. Fate. And Dr. Fate didn't need their help and said, We're, I'm not even going to intervene because chaos fighting chaos. We're not going to intervene with this. But if you don't, this is not going to end well. But he wasn't listening. Well, they all passed. But he's like, well, you know, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then his host, which is Satana's father, if I remember correctly, I don't think that's changed yet. Because remember in season three, there was this whole thing where every year or something, Satana gets one hour with her father, like takes the helmet off and whatever. I think that's still, yeah, because it looked like it's like the Satana's father, clearly still, it seems to me, because I don't think they've, they've changed the host yet. But he was going on and saying, you forgot one fundamental thing about your whole existence because they actually talked about through the flashback the birth and the creation of dr fate and why it was needed which we'll get to that in a second but basically talking about you know the one fundamental thing you're not thinking of nabu is the fact that your hosts have their own things that they bring to helping you dr fate when they put the helmet on it it basically creates the best version that it can be at the moment because of their own faith in their own basically strengths that they bring as they put the helmet on it's not like where they put the helmet on and everything's just fine it's not the case at all and then showing where dr fate was a part of the jsa dr fate's part of the justice league and 
it's not just about chaos and order and all that kind of stuff. It is, but it's more than that. And then you see at the end where Clarion is there at the door <laughs> and Nephew Stork going, let me in. Like you, I forget the wording, but it was so funny. He's like old, like old dirty something <laughs> or old creep or something. I don't know what he said. I can't remember the exact words, but it was so funny because Clarion, of course, said it. It was funny. Well, then Child shows up. Clarion sets forth Tinkles, uh, Tingles, whatever the fucking cat's name is. <laughs> Just a giant fucking tiger-esque version of itself. And then Flaw kills it. And Clarion is gone. Now I'm thinking, when they get rid of the child, whenever that hit, whenever, I'm assuming the last episode of this arc, <laughs> Clarion can then return. I'm guessing. I don't know. This is not good. This is not good at all. Because you saw the look in everybody's face like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Even Dr. Fate was shocked like, um, mm, because they didn't think it was going to be that easy. Because his whole thing was, well, chaos fighting chaos, whatever. Mm. It's not that simple. It's not. But it was interesting to see where they kind of, now they're all going to have to agree. I wasn't sure what was going to happen in this episode, but I was quite surprised by the direction in terms of putting the kids through tests and then Dr. Fate ultimately realizing that, that I see the point, but it's okay. And then all of a sudden, Clarion's gone and Child is now there by herself and going to possibly destroy everything, take over shit. So now they all have to team up and Dr. Fate goes, oh, fuck. Okay, now I get it. I get it. Now I need to realize I'm, I was being an idiot. We also have the flashback stuff with uh, Babylonia or a Bab uh, Babylonia or something to the effect a new city that was raised by Vandal under a different name now, some eight thousand something years later or something, which is crazy. And then there's Clarion, and Clarion brings forth Starro, a Starro. What? Because he's like <laughs> so funny. Because Clarion's like, okay, okay, Vandal or whatever your name is now, because you keep fucking changing your name. Okay. You, you need order it within your city. You need people to follow you. Okay, well, I'll bring a Starro to help you. <laughs> no, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> and then in that process, Vandal's son at the time, because he's had many fucking kids, Vandal's son at the time dies. They use his death and all of the things that kind of led to that point to create Dr. Fate, to create the uh the agent of order or basically the, the one who is going to basically you know try to control order and trying to basically stop chaos because like the, the, it was all chaos that led up to all of that i mean and then the, we had seen before where chaos of course the whole uh, what happened to atlantis and everything that was a chaos as well because clarion's the one who fucking sunk it along with the whole goddamn continent basically it was like it was crazy as shit crazy as hell so yeah <laughs> I'm really enjoying this arc. Um, I'll be honest, I was expecting a little bit more in terms of story, but overall, I was happy that they gave a little bit more uh, focus to Zatanna's three kids, students, three children, no, <laughs> the students, and them kind of going over the, getting over the struggles because this fight is not going to be easy, especially with showing at the end where Clarion was able, was easily taken out of this whole entire situation where literally Naboo's whole thing was well, it's chaos fighting chaos, well, not the case anymore, so things are going to have to fundamentally change, because I was thinking at first, when she said, well, you know where I'm going Dr. Fate, I'm guessing, because your dad, but I'm thinking, but maybe they could be throwing us a curveball and it's actually Constantine I'm thinking Constantine's going to show up I, I, even though I have no idea, no clue if that's going to happen I just have a sneaking suspicion because the fact that now the child is has no opposition in terms of fighting another chaos, um, you know, Clarion, that maybe we're going to need Constantine's help because this is probably going to be harder than they think. That's my guess. I'm going to stick with it. That's my prediction. What did you guys think of the episode? I'm curious to know your thoughts, guys, because this it's been an interesting arc so far. Oh, we've also uh, had the Beast Boy stuff. I almost forgot. Beast Boy stuff. So Beast Boy... He's continuing to sleep. He missed out on another mission. I don't know where they're taking this. I really hope they get to the point soon. Obviously, they kept showing him sleeping, the sleeping pills. His phone was buzzing like crazy. I don't know what the hell that meant, but I really hope they get to 
to whatever they're doing to the Beast Boy because at because at a certain point it's going to get kind of tiresome where literally all he's doing is just not doing anything. And people are commenting, and I get it, that people grieve differently, but at the same time, this guy has got to get his shit together or do something because all he's doing is sleeping and not doing anything productive and taking sleeping pills. This is not good, okay? I don't know what they're doing with him. I know the actor had been asked on Twitter about, um, so what's going on with Beast Boy? And he's like, just just give it time. You'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Well, okay, we've given it some time. We've We've been giving it quite some time. We still have nothing going on with him in terms of continuing to sleep, look at pictures of Superboy. I get it, grieving, but that's all he's been doing. There's been nothing productive he's been doing. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to still wait and see, I guess. So what do you guys think of the episode overall? I'm curious to know your thoughts, guys. Whatever thoughts you have, let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.